good morning uh finally the the question and answers from act 3 we have uh, gone through the scene in great detail uh, the sorry the act in great detail in all the three scenes I, i'm at, if you see what you see in front of me is the critical analysis of the act of act 3 scene 3 which is otherwise called the happy scene or the scene of magic and illusion of prospero the scene of self realization uh there are you know there are various uh, ways that you can address act 3 scene 3 so what i've done here i've put on the board and instead of using the board i have taken a image of the board and put it up for you uh it's a critical analysis of the scene so remember when you critically analyzing a scene you don't write about the summary of the scene many of you tend to paraphrase the scene and write it and that is not what an analysis is all about analysis are the, is based on the basic themes that come out in the scene what the the highlights of the characters the highlights of the uh, action the highlight of uh, the plot that is assessed in the scene comprises critical analysis and not a paraphrase that many of you tend to write so please 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 Uh, avoid that i've given points here for the for you to for i mean to sort of help you to frame an answer and also remember that like i reiterate every time when you're writing a long 15 mark answer is you need at least four to five relevant quotes to be woven into the um, fabric of your answer it is not that you just because you need quotes you just put four or five quotes somewhere it has to be woven into the fabric of your answer so please do remember that right now if i'm looking at this is i'm giving you some aspects of how you analyze it uh, you know the preparation for the happy begins with uh, when gonzalo says i can go no further sir my old bones ache so the theme of exhaustion when they're all exhausted remember they were looking for ferdinand uh, who had uh, drowned yes when the ship has sunk and uh, walking for a long distance uh, the theme of exhaustion brings about the resting yes so alonzo with the exhausted alonzo musing about the loss of his son and this exhaustion when they are resting sebastian and antonio they renew their plans to kill remember the plan to kill what happened in act 1 scene 2 the last part here no sorry act 2 scene 1 uh, Um, sorry for that yeah uh, when they are actually planning uh, they are plotting to kill um, alonzo the king of naples and sebastian to take over power <clears throat> so uh, alonzo is musing about the loss of his son and sebastian and antonio plotting uh, for the death of alonzo and this is interrupt this is interrupted with the banquet which brought in with music and the strange shapes and come dancing in which also brings in the predominant theme in the tempest that you have done since act 1 that is the theme of illusion right so this banquet and illusion naturally come hand in hand and like i've told you the next point which would lead them to believe in the impossible tale we told by Celia there you have a lot of uh, referencing to when he says that you know we would believe that such creatures did exist and with the uh, you know dew lapped uh, throats and the strange ears and strange features and uh, because now we have seen it ourselves i mean we we are a preview to it so we know that such stories can be true when we see the spirits but also we must remember that the noise and songs not only sets up the banquet but the banquet is a source of disruption it apparently appears to be a sucker for them food for weary travelers but actually it is a source of disruption the happy comes in aerial in disguise as deemed by prospero comes into the scene sorry comes into the scene with to accost the men of sin right so happy 
brings the idea that this island will bring punishment. It might appear to be wondrous, it might appear to be beautiful, you know, in this Commonwealth speech of uh, Gonzalo, remember, we could, we could make this a paradise, but, but there is a special reason why they have come onto the island and the islands will bring punishment, yes. So the aerial stone as a harpy is demonstrative. Yes, you are three men of sin, so suffering has to follow. It cannot be that you are going to celebrate the banquet. So when Ariel comes in, the banquet disappears. They are not worthy to partake of the food that has been laid out for them. Not all of them are um, do have the correct virtues to partake of the food if we have the religious aspect of the food kept in mind. Yes. Uh, so if I say the island is brought in suffering, Ariel to Harpy's speech reminds it, reminds all of them, three men of sin, Alonso and Antonio Sebastian. Alonso, you have lost your son. Your son is down, gone forever. Yes. And you are going to suffer for this thought for the rest of your life. Because, see, death ends all suffering. But if you are alive and you are made to think about what your actions have brought about, the kind of tragedy that your actions have led to, that is worse than dying. So that's what he says, suffering will follow. You're cast onto the uninhabited island, yes. You're in a state of desperation. You might cause yourself, you know, when they're so desperate, like Alonso says in the scene, I, I want to end my life. I want to be, you know, when he's, he quotes, like to be on the muddied uh, waters, like my son. I would want to be there. I don't want to be alive and don't want to be all about in this island. So you see, this uh, it's a state of desperation that the harpy induces in Alonso. Yes. Uh, and what is very important is for the first time, these three men of sin, Gonzalo and the others, are brought into this world of prosperity, which is the island which they did not know. Ferdinand has known about it. Um, Stefano and Trinculo have been introduced to it by Caliban. But this, this group of the nobility and courtiers from the ship still don't know. And so this is when Prospero becomes a part of their realization, their action in this scene, yes. And Ariel says that we are spirits divine, so your swords are powerless because we are made of the same element and you will not be able to harm even a dole of our plume. Because you see, Harpy has got like, if, if you remember the shape that I, uh, figure that I showed you, the face of a woman and the wings of a bird. So not a single feather can you harm, even if you try to use your sword, because the element that has tempered your sword, is, we are made of the same element. We are divine. We are of the spirits. We are ministers of destiny. So you are powerless in front of us. All right? So... If, if you look at it as a conclusion, you will you will give details about Ariel's speech. I, I have not write, written it out because I know you will write that out. But what brings about the speech, uh, the, the, the thought behind this is what I've written here, which is a part of your analysis, right? So when you're concluding, you're not just concluding with what Gonzalo tells Adrian, go run after them. They might commit suicide uh, because they are not in their senses or... It is not the Sebastian and Tony go back to planning. It is, the conclusion is a realization of Alonso, of the wrong deed that he had committed 12 years ago, that realization. After 12 years, the name of Prospero has come back into his life to show him that all that has happened, it's been late, but it's not that it is not happening. It is happening. So after 12 years, he will now have to pay for that sin that he committed. 
Yes. Uh, Sebastian and Antonio are fools. And their folly is they believe that uh, they can fight these legions and they are not even repentant of what they had done. They are still thinking about the next conspiracy that they have planned to hatch, right? Gonzalo realizes the desperation and see, he is not a man of sin. Yes, you might say that he did, was a part, he was one of the officers. But remember his role, he was the one for whom Prospero and Miranda were saved because he saw to it that there was ample food on the boat. There were all his books that Prospero needed were brought in from the library, the clothes and everything that he required for his study and to survive on the island was provided by Gonzalo. So for him, there is no, uh, uh, you can say there is no, uh, the theme of repentance is not there for him. He is, I mean, he's not one to seek forgiveness. Perhaps he's only one who is, who is relieved of the fact that he gave them the succor that they needed at that point in time, right? But what he realizes now is, because Alonso has come to the conclusion that that act 12 years ago, the harm that he caused to Prospero, is the reason for Ferdinand's debt, he has become mad. So perhaps he's going to harm himself. Perhaps he's thinking of killing himself. And Gonzalo's role is to see that his king remains alive. So he realizes his desperation, sends Adrian off. Yes. So Harpy, you are going to end again with the Harpy. Harpy being the voice of the conscience. Harpy being uh, the conscience, uh, not just the voice of the conscience perhaps, Harpy being the realization itself. Harpy brings divine retribution. Yes, so that is the role of the Harpy. And that's how you will analyze it. Remember four to five quotes of your choosing, you must do. And remember, very important, uh, perhaps we are now, we have reached a point where Prospero has got all those people who he needs uh, to be under his control, truly uh, brought within his fold to exact the vengeance that he has waited to have for 12 long years. So are you clear with the critical analysis? Remember 15 mark answer. So, I mean, you might get it in uh, three parts. The first part, remember I've, I've divided the, the act three scene three in three parts. So each part could be one part of your answer. So makes it easier. The first part would be the, um, the exhaustion and the, uh, the, the pain of drowning and then the plotting of Sebastian and Antonio. The second part would be the banquet and how they react to the banquet, which I've done in my the previous lesson. And the final, of course, which I'm doing here, the analysis of the heart. Got it? So if this comes in parts, the first part till the uh, uh, till the impossible tales, uh, till banquet with music and strange spirits, till there, will be your part two and after that with the coming when the banquet disappears you start the third part of your answer right so i've, I've put all the three parts here or i put it as one general answer depends on how what kind of question you get you attempt it accordingly right great now we move to uh, reference to the context yes so the reference to the context questions uh, i've given it from all the three scenes uh, if you see, I want you to have the question so that you attempt the question. I have, uh, like I always do, I have given answers to one question. This is, of course, from uh, the very first scene about uh, Miranda and Prospero, uh, Ferdinand and how poor worm thou art affected, the visitation shows it all. Then you have uh, these six questions, it follows the same pattern. All right, the second question is, again, from the first scene where Miranda talks of my unworthiness, they dare not offer what I desire to give. Uh, very direct questions. Again, the questions are here, the passage is here. Please, please do attempt it, write it. If you want me to go through the answer, you're most free to. Like I've mentioned, 
my email ID you're free to write your answers and uh, post them for me to give you a feedback question three again from the next scene where uh, Stefano Caliban and Ariel meet and Caliban uh, tells them about how they need to destroy Prospero for and he wants a new master yes and of course this is the part when Ariel plays his uh, his, his tricksy best you know and is causing more problems for Trinculo again a six mark answer uh, this is uh, this is a beautiful part like I told you the end of the scene uh, end of scene two of act three when he when Caliban said be not be afraid of the island is full of noises for the first time we have very you know, positive sort of uh, thoughts of Caliban uh, songs and sweet airs that give delight and hurt not sometimes a thousand twang twangling instruments will hum about my ears and sometimes voices that if I then had awaked after a long sleep will make me sleep again and then in dreaming the clouds me thought would open and show riches ready to drop upon me that when I waked I cried to dream again so there are six questions and uh, very direct you will be able to answer it and finally you have question five which is my sample answer when Ariel says you fools I and my fellows are ministers of fate this is from scene three be happy the elements of whom your swords are tempered may as well wound the loud winds or will be mocked at stabs kill the still closing waters as diminish one dowel that's in my plume my fellow ministers are like invulnerable whom is Ariel addressing these lines to? Ariel is addressing these lines to Alonso, Sebastian, Antonio specifically. There are other presents, but specifically to the three men of sin. One more. Second, when does Ariel make the speech? What is the main argument in his speech? Ariel speaks these lines as soon as he makes the banquet laid out for the royal courtiers disappear. Disappears and then he introduces himself. That's the first part. Second part, that will be one mark for that. The two marks will be what is the main argument of his speech? Of course, Ariel clearly tells them that they are powerless against him and his fellow spirits as they are the very servants of destiny. They are made of a similar substance like the swords raised. Hence, their swords will be powerless as they can only strike the wind and stab the waters around, signifying no damage to Ariel or any of his ministers. Two marks for that. That they are the servants of destiny and the men of sin are powerless to destroy them. They can't, can't cause any harm to them, right? So the two parts of the question. What is the third? How has destiny punished the people addressed here? Yes. So destiny has caused the ship they were in to be caught in a violent tempest and sink, right? Definitely. They've been thrown upon this uninhabited island, clueless as to how to survive. Yes, right? And Alonso has also in the process lost his only son Ferdinand by drowning. So you have these three points which will be good enough for your three months. Fourth question. What has Prospero designed Ariel as here and why? Direct. Prospero has designed Ariel as a harpy used in the time of Renaissance as an instrument of divine vengeance. That's your first part of the question. One mark. And why? Why? He intends to exact revenge from the three above for usurping what rightfully belonged to him, the dukedom of Milan, right? Also, those three need to be punished for cheating an innocent man and plotting to destroy his life and that of his daughter. So two marks for these two parts. Revenge for the deed that they have done, taking away his dukedom. And also, also, they, were plot they plotted to cause his death, right? Fifth question is, what is the only way for those addressed uh, for those addressed it should be uh, sorry for the typo what is the only way for those addressed to redeem themselves uh, Ariel as a harpy warns the three men that they have no alternative but to be repentant of the acts of the past so that other than that there is nothing else they can do if they do not seek forgiveness they will face a lifetime of prolonged pain and torture which is more painful than death. Like I told you, explained to you earlier. They also have to promise that to cause harm to anyone for the rest of their lives, that, sorry, they also have to promise not to cause harm. Typing, please uh, do, do correct it. 
promise not to cause harm i am doing it just now promise not to cause harm to anyone for the rest of their life um uh, uh they also have to promise not to cause harm to anyone for the rest of their lives and you can put a comma here to be at peace or else grief and misery is fated for them grief and misery is fated for them so if you look at the if you look at the question here uh, uh whom addressed right what is only way for those addressed to redeem themselves so it's very clear they have no alternative but to be repentant if they do not seek forgiveness they'll face a lifetime of prolonged pain and torture which is more painful than death they also have to promise not to cause harm to anyone for the rest of their lives to be at peace or else there is only grief and misery uh, there one minute there for or else only or we can remove this for or else only grief and misery uh, is fated for them so that makes the answer complete only grief and misery is fated for them right and then the meanings of tempered and dull tempered of course is either you form something is formed or something is designed and dull is that feather the soft feather on the plume of a bird right that's a dull so i i've given you the sample answer to one question and you have the other questions right in front of you uh, so please uh please do attempt all the questions see that uh, you write you must write unless you write you will not be able to gauge how much to be written remember these are absolutely to the point unlike the merchant of venice answers that you wrote okay so with this reference to the context and the sample answers and of course the long answer that i i did discuss with you uh, uh we conclude act 3 scene 3 right moving on to act 4 very soon see you till then stay safe take care bye